Welcome everyone. We might uh, kick things off. Um, thanks so much for joining us this evening for our Articulate Talk series. Uh, this series is called Spanish Continuers and Extension, What is Next? And we're very excited to have you um, here this afternoon. So before we uh, begin, I'd like to um, acknowledge the uh, traditional owners of the land on which we're currently meeting on today. So we recognise and pay respect to the elders and communities past, present and emerging of the lands that the University of Sydney campuses stand on. For thousands of years, they have shared and exchanged knowledges across innumerable generations for the benefit of all. So uh, a little bit about the program for this evening. Um, so I'll do a little bit of housekeeping um, and then we'll go through the presentation. At the end, where we'll have a uh, question and answer. So please pop your any questions that you might have in the Q&A function. Um, we'll be able to uh, answer them at the end for you. Um, we'll also have an evaluation and we'd really encourage you to fill in our evaluation at the end to give your feedback on um, what you liked from the series today and what other um, topics you might like to see in our, our Articulate sessions uh, in the future. So please, please answer that one for us. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, please add any questions to the Q&A. Um, the session will be recorded today and it will be sent to you via email after the event um, and we'll also share it with anyone who um, has registered but wasn't able to attend. So, and if there's anyone that you think that might uh, benefit from having the recording, please let us know. You can email us at fast.partnerships at sydney.edu.au and we'll share the recording with you um, as well as some resources from the presentation today. Um, so I would like to um, welcome our fantastic speaker for um, this evening, who's going to take you through our talk series. Uh, so please welcome Raquel, everyone. Hi, hello. How are you? Can you hear me well? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Charlotte, for the introduction and also Joyce. Uh, you two made possible uh, this evening together in this talk. So I'm very grateful. Thank you everybody for attend to the webinar. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna change to Spanish briefly. Um, eh, porque la mayor parte de la charla va a ser en, en español. But don't, don't worry, uh, because uh, I will try also to summarize all the important aspects in English um, at the end of each se uh, section. Okay, so uh, I think we can start. As you can see in the content, como podéis ver en el contenido para, para esta tarde, eh, la sesión va a ser muy interactiva. Uh, so we need that you participate uh, with your comments, your questions, and also with uh, your devices, because we are going to do also a, a little game. Uh, so I think it will be much more, everything will be much more satisfying and successful if, uh, if you just say something about all the questions that I have for you and all the content that we are going to uh, share together to, um, this evening. Okay, so vamos a empezar eh, viendo un poquito el objetivo de la charla es eh, reconocer la importancia en el mundo actual del español, ¿no? En un contexto internacional, cultural, eh, artístico y social, ¿no? Entonces, para, para esto vamos a empezar primero eh, con un pequeño juego en el que me gustaría que me dijerais si reconocéis a alguien, ¿no? A alguno de los personajes que, que, tenemos, que tenemos por aquí. So you can tell me names, professions, uh, even the country of origin of if you know about this uh, famous uh, uh, Spanish speakers <laughs> in the world of the arts, culture, music, science. So if you know, you can just, I think you can just write in the chat. Yes, that's it, Joyce. Yeah, all right. So yes, feel free to, 
to add your answers in the chat. It doesn't matter who you choose. So, ¿a quién reconocéis? ¿Y por qué? No? And, and why? Why do uh, you know them? Why they, what they are famous for? Hmm? Okay, I see that some, someone is raising the head, the hand. I don't know if we can... Okay, Shakira, cantante colombiana, that's it. So, muy bien, Adriana. Oh, Tania, okay. Okay, Picasso, Tania, muy bien. Uh, who, um, what is Picasso famous for? Frida Kahlo. He's a painter, that's it. Leo Messi, Messi, naturalmente. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we have football players, we have painters, we have singers. ¿Qué más? Más profesiones, más gente famosa por aquí. Pedro Pascal, chileno, actor, that's it, the three things. <laughs> okay, Rosalía es cantante, Cervantes, no, this here, Cervantes, escritor, Ana de Armas, actriz, Margarita Salas, científica, muy bien, muy bien, Rosa, esta era más difícil, no, this one was a little more complicated. But Margarita Salas' discoveries are very important, no, de uh, she she did uh, the most of her research in the DNA uh, field, okay. Uh, el chat todavía no funciona, I, but I can see your answers now. Okay, and Rafael Nadal, tenista. Yeah, I think we have everybody. Well, another singer, no? Yeah, this reggaeton singer. <laughs> Okay, so yes, that's it. Use the Q and A. All right, thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, that's actually true. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking in the Q and Q, Q and A. Muy bien, vale, genial, fantástico, vale. Pues lo que estamos viendo entonces es que uh, tenemos, bueno, una serie de de nat eh, hablantes nativos de español, no, conocidos internacionalmente. Eh, en el ámbito de las artes, las ciencias, la música, etcétera, ¿no? Y la ciencia también. Eh, bien, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué he empezado la, la sesión con, con estos personajes? Well, because I, I wanted to pay my, you know, my homage no, to these people too, because I think they uh, also, they are doing a good job in increasing the numbers of students of Spanish around the world, no? Um, so we are the teachers, we teach Spanish, but definitely the, as the culture is getting stronger, as the arts in Spanish voices are getting stronger, uh, also the interest no, in Spanish language is increasing around the world. So as we can see here, for example. So, tenemos los últimos datos eh, eh, de el estado del español en el mundo. So, estos datos son de 2022. Eh, el Instituto Cervantes eh, publica todos los años un, un anuario con los datos acerca del español en el mundo. And these are the la, eh, latest data, ¿no? Uh, so as you can see, let me, okay, now I can, yeah. Uh, as you can see, well, we have here uh, first, we have a list of the countries in where uh, Spanish is an official language, ¿vale? Eh, lengua oficial en Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, etc. ¿no? Eh, y vamos a ver algunos de los datos más interesantes actualmente. 
Eh, actualmente en el mundo encontramos más eh, de 595 millones de personas que son usuarios potenciales de español. So this means that almost 600 million people in the world is able to communicate in Spanish. So in this number, we include native speakers, almost 500 million, uh, million um, eh, students, okay? So, in, en número de hablantes nativos, el español es la segunda lengua del mundo, solo por detrás del chino mandarín. So, Spanish is the second language in, number, in the number of uh, native speakers. Y es la cuarta en el total de hablantes, el número total de hablantes. So, again, this uh, total number, this final number, almost 600 million of people, Uh, that is able to communicate in Spanish um, is the fourth, makes Spanish the fourth language in the world after English, Chinese, and Hindi. So that's a very strong uh, position. Um, and I think we, we can feel here very lucky that be able to communicate directly with 600 million people in the world. So another data that is interesting, I think, is uh, the use of Spanish in social media. ¿vale? Es la segunda lengua más usada en redes sociales, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. So all the contents in this social media, no all, I mean, a lot of content in this social media eh, apps is created in Spanish and is um, shared in Spanish. So very, uh, very, very interesting. Okay, so as we can see, uh, Spanish is growing. Mm -hmm. uh, the interest in Spanish, the interest in learning Spanish around the world is growing. So, um, as, as I said, I think, All here, we can feel very, very lucky about sharing this, this language or the interest in learning it. Uh, because the most important thing about a language is the ability to communicate. So maybe someone makes a mistake and that's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Maybe someone feels insecure Uh, but the only thing that we should be paying attention is in, increase our ability to communicate with another human being. Um, for that, it's eh, es muy importante conocer los aspectos lingüísticos de un idioma, eh, gramática, léxico, mm, etc. Pero es Igualmente importante conocer los aspectos culturales y sociales de un idioma. So our approach here at the University of Sydney is focused in that balance, the balance between the linguistic aspects of a language, grammar, vocabulary, etc., okay, and the cultural aspects of a language. And obviously this is huge in Spanish because Again, remember, we have 21 uh, countries uh, in where Spanish is of the official language. Okay, so trying to cover all the cultural aspects is almost impossible, no, I think, but super necessary. It's super necessary to give, to provide the students with this context, this cultural and social uh, knowledge Uh, in order to give them the tools that they need to actual, actually communicate with, uh, with people in Spanish. So about that, uh, I'm going to test now uh, your uh, knowledge in culture uh, from Latin America and Spain. Okay, so ¿cuánto sabes de cultura hispanoamericana y española? We are going to do a little game. Here is the pin. So remember, kahoot.it. 
Uh, the website is going to ask you for the pin, this pin that you are seeing now in your screens. And you just put your names there to be able to play. Okay, so are you ready? Let's go with this. I'm going to read the answers aloud too. ¿Quién escribió el Quijote? Okay, that's it. We have almost, almost everybody <laughs> saying, selecting the correct answer, ¿no? Cervantes, Miguel de Cervantes, fue el autor del Quijote en el siglo XVII, ¿no? La obra más traducida eh, a otras lenguas después de la Biblia, I think, if I don't, if I remember well. So let's go with the next one. Machu Picchu en Perú fue una antigua ciudad. Ok, muy bien. Inca, that's it. El imperio Inca estaba situado mayoritariamente en Perú, también en Bolivia y otras zonas alrededor de la cordillera de los Andes. ¿Qué ciudad es hoy Tenochtitlán? Pleno. Todos, todos, muy bien. Ciudad de México, eso es. Frida Kahlo fue una importante mexicana. Exacto, pintora, ¿no? Painter, a very famous Mexican painter. So we are still in Mexico in this question. ¿Cuándo se declaró la independencia de Argentina? This is more difficult, I think. Ok, that's it. 9 de julio de 1816. So at the beginning of the 19th century, uh, Argentina achieved their independence from, uh, from Spain. ¿En qué zona de Latinoamérica se hablan las lenguas quechuas? En los Andes, so around the cordillera de los Andes, eh, we can find the lenguas quechuas. So it's a, uh, there are a group of indigenous uh, languages. Seventh question. ¿Qué palabra del español proviene de una lengua indígena prehispánica? Chocolate. So also in English, no? Uh, the origin of this word uh, came from the Nahual. It's another uh, indigenous language of uh, la the Latin American pre-conquest. Um, because before, actually, we didn't have, we didn't know, for example, in, in Europe, we didn't know the cacao. Hmm? So no chocolate until then. <laughs> ¿Quién escribió 100 años de soledad? So let's go back to the writing. García Márquez, that's it, the Colombian writer, ¿vale? El, el escritor colombiano escribió 100 años de soledad en la década de los años 60. La novela probablemente más conocida de el boom latinoamericano. That actually I recommend you a lot, even if you want to read it in English, uh, it's, it's, it's great to understand the realismo mágico. Hmm? And I give you, the, uh, it, it will give you context about the cultural in, in Colombia. So, ¿dónde está la Alhambra? ¿De qué país es la Alhambra? Está en España, ¿vale? Es un palacio árabe. Eh, de la Edad Media, de lo que consideramos Edad Media, eh, que está, por supuesto, en España, en donde podemos encontrar muchos edificios eh, de arquitectura eh, árabe, ¿no? por, debido a todos los años de la presencia árabe en la, en la península. Última pregunta, última. ¿De qué país latinoamericano son típicas las arepas? 
de Venezuela. Es cierto que se comen arepas en otros lugares, okay? So we can find arepas in other countries too, but the origin Venezuela. Okay. So let's go back now to the presentation. And I would like to open a, a Q and A um, space if it's possible, because I would like that you tell me what kind of questions, um, what aspects we cover with these questions. For example, um, literature, no? So what, as, what cultural aspects we cover in this uh, game? Muy bien, lengua, etimología, de acuerdo. Uh -huh. Comida, literatura, geografía, exacto, gastronomía, uh -huh. historia, lugares históricos, ¿vale? Literatura, arte, exacto, nos faltaba arte por aquí, First Nation America, sí, ¿vale? De acuerdo, o, origen, orígenes también. Uh -huh. Muy bien, exacto. Entonces, ¿qué? ¿Qué quería mostraros aquí? No, I, I wanted to, sh eh, to show you just in a very ludic way, no, just with this uh, little game. What includes eh, cultural knowledge? No, it's not just about uh, literature. It's not just about art. No, there are many aspects that eh, creates and conforms a culture. And um, we cover all. Mm? Uh, I should probably include there something about cinema. Mm? Yeah, I missed I missed a film there at least. But that's the idea. No, we in our units we cover all the aspects of cultural uh, contents. Okay. Um, so think about all of this. Think about history, gastronomy. Uh, behaviors of the people, uh, myth, myths, uh, ancient um, ancient history too, because it has a, an importance and, and a significance in our uh, our our days, no? In nowadays, uh, literature, of course, etc. Okay, so many, many, many things that actually have an impact. In, uh, in how is a culture and in how uh, a community express uh, itself, no? Okay, so let's continue with this idea of having an impact. And I want to uh, show you now, let's see if I can, yeah. Uh, I want to show you now what the students, current students in at the University of, of Sydney, um, think about the um, okay about studying uh, Spanish. Eh, so, estos son algunos de mis estudiantes eh, que bueno. Eh, se han ofrecido <ríe> amablemente a compartir con nosotros el impacto que tiene en sus vidas eh, personales y profesionales estudiar español. Uh, after watching this video, uh, I'm going to open a Padlet. So in that Padlet, you also can answer this same question. Mm -hmm. So, ¿qué impacto tiene en mi vida personal estudiar español? I mean, eh, how studying Spanish has an impact in my personal life, no? In which ways eh, I can feel that studying Spanish is making me, making me a different person, no? So, of what benefits eh, that have. Okay, so let's, let's hear. Vamos a escuchar a los estudiantes. Ella es Ariana. Las mejores canciones están en español, ¿no? Y las telenovelas y las, los comentarios de fútbol 
y uh, estoy disfrutando de que no tener subtítulos en inglés. Ok, so Ariana señala que lo que más le gusta y el mayor beneficio en su vida personal, ¿vale? We talk later about the professional uh, eh, part. Eh, es sobre poder comunicarse, ¿no? poder entender directamente eh, la música, las series de televisión, los partidos de fútbol, eh, porque obviamente hay una diferencia ¿no? entre eh, comprender algo de una manera directa e intrínseca a hacerlo a través de un proceso, ¿no? Como puede ser el subtitulado, por ejemplo. So, she uh, focuses on eh, the entertainment eh, side, ¿no? Of the, <laughs> of the language. So, music, series. So, let's hear Kiran. De lenguas extranjeras y... El español es una lengua que me ha encantado por más de una, más de una década. En, ahora que puedo entender el español, puedo conectarme mejor con películas, con música y también con hispanohablantes, con un, un montón de países y superar, superar esas barreras sociales así. Vale, pues eh, Kiran, ¿no? además de, de la música también, las películas, señala la importancia de la conexión interpersonal, ¿no? el hacer relaciones y amigos de otros países en su propia, en, en su propia lengua le permite acceder a una relación más eh, profunda, ¿no? a conectar de una manera más profunda. Ok, so he's also eh, pointing out the connection with, eh, among people, ¿no? Um, vamos a escuchar a Luisa. Los beneficios de estudiar el español son muchos, principalmente conocer músicas y cultura extremadamente interesante, pero sobre todo como soy brasileña, uh, me ayuda a conectar con culturas de la región diversas. Muy bien, Luisa también señala la, eh, los beneficios de entender directamente ¿no? canciones, películas, etcétera, que le gustan, que le atraen, que le apasionan. Y también en su eh, contexto personal, ella como brasileña eh, está, eh, se encuentra pues, en una situación en la que está rodeada ¿no? de países hispanohablantes y qué importancia tiene eso en su, en su país también, ¿no? En cuanto a, eh, a la gente que, que tenemos, que, que está allí. Vale. Vamos con la segunda pregunta, que también me gustaría que respondierais después en el Padlet. Eh, en este caso es eh, sobre el impacto en el futuro profesional. So, ¿Qué beneficios, qué impacto profesional puede tener estudiar español en su futuro? ¿Mm? Vamos a escuchar a Beth. So, the question is about the uh, professional future. No, what uh, benef what can be the benefits of studying Spanish, Spanish for your uh, professional career? Estoy estudiando en Panamá y saber un otro idioma uh, podría ayudarme a comunicar con los pacientes y sus familias y podría viajar y trabajar en otros países para uh, ejercer uh, <ríe> como enfermera. Bueno, eh, personalmente amo la respuesta de Beth. I love the answer that Beth. Eh, Beth Uh, give here uh, gives here because she's studying nursery and she uh, she's telling us that uh, she she wants to learn Spanish she, because she want to she wants to communicate directly with patients that maybe are in Australia and they are not able to communicate well in in English 
uh, especially, you know, when you go to the doctor, you are nervous, you are maybe in pain, these kind of things, no? So I, I just love her answer. So she's super, super, super nice. Uh, also, she, she comments, she says that she wants to travel around uh, some Spanish speaking uh, countries and maybe work there. Let's hear Ariana. Eh, solicitado a enseñar inglés en España el próximo año durante seis meses. Estoy muy segura de que me ayudaría a saber español. Bueno, en el caso de Ariana, eh, ella va a España el próximo año como asistente de inglés. So, como profesor auxiliar de inglés. So, she's going to Spain next year as a language assistant, an English language uh, assistant. But, of course, she's going to live and work in Spain. So, at least for a year. So, obviously, uh, knowing Spanish is, is a very important no? for, for her. Okay, Luisa. Muy interesante lo que nos dice Luisa. Luisa quiere trabajar eh, en diplomacia y derecho internacional. So, if you want to be eh, in this sort of career, no, like international relationships, politics, eh, international business, etc. Uh, knowing Spanish besides English and maybe another eh, a third language, um, that would be great, <laughs> is very, very important. Okay. And last, Kiran. Estoy seguro de que haber estudiado español va a mejorar mis, mis oportunidades profesionales. Um, me gustaría trabajar en algún país um, española o latinoamericana, eh, pero también me gustaría tener la oportunidad de enseñar el inglés a estudiantes hispanos. Siempre lo haré por el aprendizaje de otras lenguas y creo que el español es una buenísima elección. Vale, pues Kiran señala dos cosas, ¿no? Una, trabajar en un país de habla española. So maybe in the future he's gonna work eh, in a Spanish speaking country for a time. And la segunda es enseñar inglés, ¿no? Como segunda lengua. Uh, so be a teacher, eh, an English teacher as a second language. Um, so Spanish also plays a very important role there uh, because many students potentially can speak Spanish, but also uh, because when you learn a second language, I can guarantee you, and probably you know this, that you understand better the, your own language and how it works and how you can teach your language, no? So in both, in both ways, definitely. Okay, so now Joyce, I think, is going to share in the chat uh, the link for the Padlet that I'm going to share also here. So we're going to focus in these two questions here, okay? So the same questions that I did to my students. ¿Qué impacto tiene en mi vida personal estudiar español? ¿Qué impacto profesional en el futuro puede tener estudiar? Español. So I would love to hear your answers. I would love to read your answers can be in English or Spanish. Very easy. You just have to press the plus sign and directly you can write and submit your answers. And it would be lovely to see all together here. So please share. Hmm? What benefits have uh, studying Spanish in your lives? What benefits can have in your careers? Ok, pues me ayudó a conocer mis raíces como hija de migrantes españoles andaluces. Muy importante, ¿no? Muy importante conectar con nuestras raíces, conectar con nuestros orígenes en un, en un país lejano, ¿no? Eh, 
I think that's a very, very important thing uh, in this personal view, in this personal aspect, you know, is healthy for us to be connected with our roots, with our origin. So very important. Me ayuda a comunicarme con mi familia hispana. Vale, de acuerdo, ¿no? En el mismo sentido tenemos, eh, pues probablemente hijos de, eh, que son segunda generación o tercera generación viviendo en Australia. And you need to communicate with your family. That's super basic, obviously, and super important. Mm? That's it. What about your... Ok, we have another answer, sorry. Conectarse con gente de otros países de habla hispana, saber de gastronomía, historia y otros. Muy bien. So, again, this human aspect, ¿no? I think it's very important, yeah. Um, this kind of motiva uh, motivation that comes from your inside, not just the outcomes that you can achieve through the knowledge of a language. So this motivation that comes from inside, the, the, these personal uh, wishes and um, options are the ones that are, uh, are, are the ones that you, you are going to keep with your Spanish learning, for sure. If you, you have this kind of, internal motivation because they are much more stronger than just the external motivation. Me ayuda a comunicarme con mi abuelita y mi familia. Perfecto, precioso. Mirar, <ríe> me gusta mirar Netflix sin subtítulos, ¿no? Muy bien, vale. Y sobre eh, el impacto profesional, complementa mi carrera profesional. Uh, soy lingüista, he trabajado en procesamiento de lenguaje natural, me fascinan los idiomas, el español me ha ayudado a aprender otros idiomas, europeos y árabe, y además soy profe de L. Ok, so, estábamos diciendo esto, ¿no? Como eh, cómo el momento en el que empiezas a aprender una segunda lengua eh, hace mucho más fácil el acceso a una tercera y a entender mejor tu propia lengua, ¿no? Me ayuda a comunicar a, eh, con clientes en el trabajo que no hablan inglés. That's it, business, ¿no? Business, clients, yeah. If your clients are not speaking English and maybe they speak Spanish, is they are gonna uh, take your intention of speaking Spanish. Well, they are gonna appreciate it a lot, that's for sure, in all business industries. Y una más aquí teníamos, ahora tengo el placer de compartir la cultura de mis padres con mis estudiantes en la escuela, darles la posibilidad de querer viajar, conocer el mundo y a las personas interesantes que nos rodea. Muy bien, de nuevo este aspecto ¿no? de desarrollo personal, eh, de comunicación interpersonal, ¿no? Eh, well, that's the thing, what, what are language for? No, for communication, for making bridges <laughs> for get the people together mm? uh, that's the important thing that's the basic thing about uh the language okay good so let's see if we have time for maybe one more question here for you or not no i think not okay so i will i will go back to the to the presentation now um, all right, so, because I just want to say just one more thing, and then we have our turn of Q&A. Uh, okay, so I just want to say very briefly that uh, at University of Sydney, you can continue with your studies, uh, your Spanish studies, with this approach between, um, uh, that we saw here to, today. No? So our approach is combine the linguistics and the cultural aspects of the language all the time. We, we just uh, work 
this aspect together all the time. Okay? So nosotros siempre utilizamos eh, los recursos eh, disponibles, contenidos diferentes, vídeos, lecturas, eh, juegos, mmm, documentales, etcétera. Es decir, todo tipo de materiales que nos den una información cultural que podamos, a través de la que podamos explicar también un aspecto lingüístico, gramatical y at the opposite way, from the language, how we can eh, improve our knowledge uh, about the speaking Spanish, Spanish speaking countries and cultures. Uh, so, well, I think you are going to have much more information about all our units and our uh, curriculum after the talk, but I just want to point a couple of things now uh, about the possibilities that you have in uh, well, here at the University of Sydney. So you can study uh, Spanish um, as a major, that means that you are going to do your main degree and then you can add a second major uh, if you do eight units, okay? Also, you can do a minor. In that case, you have four units and you finish uh, with your degree plus a minor in Spanish, which is also very interesting. And also you can just take electives. Hmm? Uh, just be aware about the number of electives that you can take if you enroll because uh, there, is a, there is a limit, but other, other than that, you can take Spanish as elective uh, and join to one of the courses, cultural or, uh, or language course. No? And of course, we offer some possibilities of exchange. Okay, so podéis estudiar en una universidad de eh, Latinoamérica o España, un curso, sea cual sea vuestro eh, degree, okay? It doesn't matter eh, what your degree is, uh, you also, I think uh, you can study one year or one semester abroad, and these are our partner institutions, no? So we have uh, a partnership with uh, Universidad de Chile, la Universidad Javeriana en Colombia, Tecnológico de Monterrey en México, también en Perú y España. So different options that I think they are super attractive, at least if I was your age, I would be <laughs> super interesting in this kind of uh, exchange. Y ya está. De momento lo dejamos aquí. Gracias. Espero escuchar ahora vuestras preguntas. Si tenéis eh, alguna duda, si queréis que preguntar algo, estoy aquí para contestar. ¿De acuerdo? Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Raquel. Really appreciate it. Um, and thanks everyone for taking part in all of the quizzes and sharing your fantastic responses with us. We're going to open up a Q&A for Raquel. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A function. Um, but I might start uh, with a few questions um, from our side, Raquel, to get things kicked off. Um, so Raquel, for uh, lots of our students, they're currently preparing for um, their exams. So coming up to sort of trial and HSC exams, what are some resources and ways that can assist them in being able to prepare for their Spanish exam? Mm -hmm. Gracias, uh, Charlotte. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so we have some links that maybe we can uh, um, share with you about resources. Okay, so, well, I, I will explain you uh, some of them. So in the chat, you can find these uh, links. So the first material and activities. So they are three websites. You have a lot more um, that you can find uh, explanations, activities, self-correcting uh, exercises to in all of the three, okay? So, Espanol, Lingolia, o Profe Dele, todo, todo L, no problem. So, all of them are, are really good. Um, I'm also adding here, um, at 
different kind of resources that maybe can be interesting too. So for example, this web lyricsstrain.com. So in this web, you can follow the lyrics from Spanish songs uh, at the same time that you are watching, well, you are listening the song and sometimes watching the video, not always. Uh, but it's not just that, because obviously you have that in YouTube too. <laughs> no, they uh, they offer you exercises to complete uh, gaps, to fill the gaps uh, for the league. So you can practice your listening skills with this um with this site i think it's is really good and it's very very fun to do it no um uh, also i put you here uh i put here uh, this uh, link cvc.cervantes.es uh, aula lecturas so you can find there some uh, readings uh, that are organized according to different levels, okay? So if you are, even if you are in a level A1, in the beginner level, you still have some readings that you can try. Mm -hmm. So I think that is really good. Uh, here we have a couple of podcasts, Spanish podcasts and Coffee Break Spanish. Uh, this one is in Spotify, so very easy to, to find. Uh, they can be really good to just, you know, uh, listen to an episode one day and review some aspects, uh, practice listening to, but also improve your vocabulary and your fluency. Um, for the moment, of all the resources, I'm going to keep it uh, there. Let's see if we have more questions now. Thank you, Raquel. Um, what do you think some of the differences are for students in studying um, Spanish in high school versus coming to a university like Sydney and studying studying in Sydney? Well, I think the basic, the most important difference is uh, how we treat the cultural aspects. So I told you already that we do a combination of both linguist, linguistic aspects and cultural aspects but you really learn and you are assessed also about the cultural content. It's not just an excuse to uh, show um, a grammar point or a vocabulary uh, content. No, the, the cultural contents are uh, taken very seriously and in a very formal way sometimes too. Not always, but it tends to be a way to also that students can improve their uh, writing skills, not only in Spanish, also for writing essays, for example, in English for another assessments. Um, so the idea is to do this in a way that if you are interested in the future, for, in the future, for example, to conduct a research, you can do it. That's that's the point. We are. Uh, we are a university that is uh, also focused in researching and innovation. So you can take your project uh, about cultural aspects of Latin America, for example, or something that you are interesting, interested in in particular, no? for example, that is not very well uh, researched and, uh, so far. So that's the idea. We need to provide our students with all the tools and all the resources for this uh, cultural research, cultural, it's a very deeply cultural knowledge, very deep. Thanks so much, Raquel. Um, for everyone asking, all of the links that we've put into the webinar chat, we'll send to you after this along with a recording of, of today's webinar um, so you can have further access to them and look through them in your own time. I'm uh, just aware we're almost out of time, so I'll just uh, skip through to our next slide. Um, there's a QR code just up on the screen. Oops, sorry. Um, please uh, use this to fill in the evaluation from the session today. Let us know what you um, liked about the webinar. Um, Joyce has just popped the link in the chat for you as well. Um, so, um, yeah, feel free to share your, share your feedback with us.
Uh, we also have a high school programs newsletter. Um, so feel free to sign up to that. Um, you can use the link through the um, evaluation. It will um, ask you if you would like to be kept informed of University of Sydney news and events. Um, that pops you onto our mailing list so you receive um, information about some of our upcoming high school programs. So things like um, all of our Articulate series, uh, we do a series um, for society and culture, um, Aboriginal studies. So there's a few different opportunities for you to get involved um, and learn more about the subjects that you're studying through the University of Sydney. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. We hope you had a great um, evening. A big thank you to Raquel, our wonderful presenter, and to Joyce working behind the scenes to um, pop in the links and make sure everyone was uh, getting everything. Um, and thank you, everyone. If you have any questions after today's session, um, you can contact us on either of these uh, email addresses. But um, thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening and take care. Yeah, thank you, everybody. So I just want to add, uh, if you just have questions, you can send to these emails. And if it's something in particular to me, they just uh, they, they just uh, are going to share with me your questions. So don't worry for that. And um, thank you for your time. <laughs>